discussion of this is not a burial, it's a resurrection. Mm -hmm. And uh, this film is very special. The, the director's name is Lamohan Jeremiah Mozesi, who is a mm -hmm. self-taught filmmaker from your home in Lesotho. Um, yes. And now he is based in Berlin. Um, and I just want to extend warm gratitude to you, Mosa, for joining us uh, at the festival um, in lieu of the filmmaker not being able to join us. And this discussion really, I think we're, we're just so excited to hear from you about culture in Lesotho, uh, the land. We were just talking a little bit about that and some similarities and differences. Um, so, and um, just to introduce myself, my name is Aviva McClure, uh, and I'm the assistant coordinator uh, with the festival this year. Um, and it's just been so amazing to me to be on this side of the festival, because usually I'm viewing all of the films and saying hi to people in the space, but this is the first year I've been able to be involved in this way. So I'm very grateful to be here with you, Mosa. Would you, uh, would you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you now and what are you doing? Oh yeah, my, my name is Musa Khalema. Um, I live in Seattle. Uh, I was born and raised in Lesotho, which is where the film. Um, I moved here about uh, seven years ago. Uh, I have a family that, with me. I brought my wife here and now we have a few kids. So um, I'm not in the industry of filmmaking or I don't have any, I'm not representing the filmmaker by any means. I don't know them or any, uh, the reason why I am here is because it's a film that is talking about a, a, my country and some of the people who are uh, involved with the festival uh, reached out to me and they wanted me to be able, if I was able to respond to some of the questions that people might have after watching the film. And, and I was glad to, I was, I was glad to, I was glad to. So yeah, I think that that should be all about me, at least a summary of who I am. Excellent, thank you, Mosa. Mm -hmm. uh, and I see my friend Emma just joined as well. It's good to see you, Emma. Good Are to you see you all. Here? Hey, yeah. Emma. <laughs> uh, we, hey. Just, we just introduced the film, Emma, and we have some questions just about, um, just about the work that you do and uh, wondering if you can introduce yourself. We probably won't have time for music, but we have time, mm -hmm. to, we have time to just talk a little bit about where you're from. Okay. Uh... My name is uh, Ima Masai. Uh, I come from Manyara region, which is Maasai village. And uh, sorry for you, I was get like a quite uh, tough on the internet, but now it's it's fine. Yeah, so uh, I'm happy I'm on on Zoom now, and we can move on. Yeah. <laughs> Great. We're so glad you're here. So one of the first questions I had for you both was just to tell us a little bit about um, the, in the film, there are so many gorgeous uh, shots of the landscape and being able to see the land. Um, so I just was curious, do you have any um, good memories or stories about the land, Mosa, growing up in Lesotho that come to mind? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, growing up, I uh, uh, used to travel around the, the country uh, a lot. Uh, my family uh, used to travel around. So uh, there's some lowlands in the country and then there's some highlands. That's where you see all the beauty. So uh, uh, we travel so much uh, when I was at the age of, of schooling, of going to college, I actually went and studied tourism just because I wanted to work with uh, promoting the uh, biodiversity of the country. That I fell in love with the country uh, very much. So a quick history of mine, 
uh, I worked in one of the national parks uh, in Lesotho, which is uh, about very high altitude in, it's called Sechaba uh, Seeing all these mountains, seeing all these shots, these very beautiful pictures, uh, reminds me very much of when I used to work for the national park. Uh, it, it's, it's, it was a really soothing images for me, even though the film itself uh, has a little element of sadness, but just seeing the pictures in the in the film uh, just reminded me of home. Yeah, yeah. That's great. I'm I'm so yeah. glad to hear that you felt at home watching the film, Emma. I'm curious from your perspective. I know that you um, didn't grow up in Lesotho, but I'm curious with the landscape and the images that you saw of the land. Do you, did you have connections to where you're from? And tell us a little bit about the culture and land where you're from. Yeah, uh, uh, about the land for where I'm from is, uh, is a quite uh, similar because I saw the people who are taking care with cattle and, and running on with them. And uh, that's what in our culture doing, uh, especially in a part of, uh, taking care and I saw some of the women carry the firewood and it is the same with my culture. Most of the women in my culture, like they can carry the, the wood, they can go far away to look for it. Mostly in my culture, in Maasai culture, most of them who are doing that is the women and uh, other people who are doing the the taking care of with animal like cattle uh, is the man. So I see that culture and our culture is very close. So when I saw the movie, I see like, wow, this is uniqueness, a uh, uh, connection, you know? Yeah, yeah so uh, the in, the, okay, sorry. No, you go ahead. Uh, so the interest, so. So the inter the in uh, interest of the of the movie is it connected me to the around the world. It connected me to the people who have been forgotten. You know, like like I see even the the old men who are try to remember that our ancestors. So it connected me to my father. It connected me to the the area which I from. Like. Uh, this is uniqueness uh, connection. Thank you, Emma. Yeah, Mosa, you were going to say something a little earlier. Yes, yeah, so I was just talking about the, 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 the beauty of the land. Uh, um, just, just watching the film. Uh, and and, and uh, one of the things that came to mind was uh, one of the things that are very important in this film was the, the burial grounds, the graveyards. And the graveyards are very important in my culture. Uh, 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 I'll argue in any culture that buries the people in the ground. Uh, so um, the graveyard can tie uh, your generation if, a few hundred years back because uh, uh, your grandpa, your grandpa's grandpa are buried over there, and this, this, uh, this, uh, you, you, every time you know, you bury somebody, you have to go and you know visit as part of the culture, and uh, it's it's not very easy. You can't just uh, uplift people from the uh, from their lands because of the graveyard. It's very important. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you naming that that aspect of the film with burial and the the trouble with with moving, right? Because the the mm -hmm. moving part is for living, right? The living can can get up and move, mm -hmm. uh, but it complicated the story with the with the cemetery. It was almost overlooked. Um, by some of the characters who were welcoming this progress. Mm -hmm. you know? So Very I'm, true. yeah, I'm curious from both of you, um, just with regard to like your native lands and 
um, progress. Have you seen that kind of come together in a way that has been difficult, um, sort of progress or, or development coming into your, your native spaces and native lands? I guess for me, this uh, this uh, the, the the building of dams in the in in, in Lesotho it's something that I I remember uh, growing up, and and the the the, the moving of graves uh, it's something that I remember. So uh, this is this story is my story, uh, it's the story of my people. Um, so uh, just a little bit of a cultural context behind uh, the aspect of graveyards. Um, people are very much tied to the land. So I'll give you an example about me. Uh, um, I grew up in the same house. My parents still live in that house. They'll probably die in that house. So it's not like uh, here in, in America where I am. Uh, I've, 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 I've lived here. I will, I've already had two homes living here. So you move around, it's very easy. You up and live and just, you up and move and just buy a new house over there you first acquire land and then build a house on it. And people are very much tied to the land. That's why uh, there's a graveyard for a family, a certain family tree. So uh, it's not very easy to just up and leave. So uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, this story is, is one of my example, the story of my people. Wow, I'm so glad here in Seattle that you could have that experience of home. That's yeah, really uh, a, a version yeah. of it. <laughs> Emma, what are you thinking? Yeah, so uh, in my side, is they're quite different because uh, where I grow up is mostly we 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 moving. You know, uh, when I go back to my history, my uh, my community history. The mass I used to move uh, because we take care with animal, so we follow the. Uh, for instance, uh, 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 it is too dry, so we should we 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 will go to the other part to look for where the rain rain so that we can have the the food for the animal. But uh, uh, since uh, that like uh, since like uh, 1920. But when you when you when you come at this time, uh, the government just limit the uh, the land. So, for instance, my daddy used to have like three wives. So each, each wife has his own land. So uh, so now, if you try to move, there's no any place to move because everyone has his own our own area. So what the what the government say like they limit the all the all the whole community. Like if it, this is your land stay to your land so you don't have to move. But actually the interesting is they, uh, they, 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 they put the part of, this is the part for taking your animal to find the, the food. So uh, it's in interesting for the other brother who just move on on that because it reminds me like, this culture is like the same, but the thing is nowadays we are, we are to limit especially in a part of the environment, everything get changed. Thank you, Emma. I think one of the, one of the parts of the, the wilderness that I really appreciated about the film was seeing all of the wildflowers. And there was that beautiful scene of um, um, Mantoa kind of walking as behind her, the, the developers in like the yellow suits are walking. Mm -hmm. And I, it was so interesting how uh, Mosesi did this sort of them in the background lurking or cutting a tree yeah. or measuring a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I think what came up with that was sort of like, I, I think I'm wondering, um, do you see uh, benefits to development in these areas, or do you see this as this progress as as a challenge, or a bit of both? You know, development is is essential. Um, uh, well, it, it, it development comes with its own uh, uh, negative effects. 
So uh, I, I, I think uh, with, with development, the, the best thing if you are a driver of development is to try and mitigate the negative effects as much as possible. So uh, I, I think with, 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 with what I remember as far as the dams, uh, the approach could have been a little bit better. Either way, uh, moving you, 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 you people from the burial grounds is no, is, was never gonna be an easy thing. Uh, so development is essential. Right now with the dams, we have uh, a hydropower station that provides electricity for parts of the nation. So I guess it's one of those things that, you know, with all, with, with development comes with, you know, its own negatives, with its own negatives, yeah. Thank you, Mosa. Emma, what, uh, what do you think about that question around uh, development in native lands? And are you seeing sort of the, the same challenges that we saw in the film where, you know, we didn't really see the, the folks that were doing the developing, right, in the yellow? They weren't talking to the other characters. They were sort of doing their own thing. Right. So I'm curious, uh, yeah. from your perspective, if this is something that you've observed or what you thought about that in the film. Uh, in the film, the, I, I, I see like uh, 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 in, in, that, in that part, it seemed like it was, it was interesting, but literally it, it quite get different, you know, like everything get changed on on the on on the on the on the middle that's all I, I i see on that part thank you yeah the the thing that surprised me about the film too was this word resurrection i think it meant different things throughout the film right so um i think in in this word resurrection or like, to me, I'm thinking like rising, right? Um, and we see Mantoa rise, you know, this, this woman at 80 years old still finding this, this fight, this purpose, right? Um, but then there's also the resurrection actually of, of the bodies, right? Coming out of the ground. So just thinking of this word resurrection, how does that word, um, what does that word mean to you? I, to me, the word resurrection, it, it basically means, you know, coming alive again. And it's, it's I think it's a little bit of a word play which from the, the Jeremiah and the, whoever who made the, 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 the film, but it's, it, like if you see the movie, there's a lot of a uh, reference to Christianity. So r resurrection is is one of the uh, events that will happen per the Bible. So it codes a little bit of a Bible, and he they did a little bit of word play with uh, saying the people. Uh, being uh, uh, moved to a different, relocated, and 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 the the, the lady just uh, up and finding some energy to you know protest this thing, this event. I think it's it's there's, it's multi layered. There's a lot of elements to to the word in itself. Yes, thank you. I I agree. I think it was a very a big a, a play on words, I think, was a great way to say that, Mosa. Thank you. Yeah. Emma. Yeah. Yeah. So, on, yeah, on me, I can add, I can add something on him, like uh, uh, what what the movie, in, what the interest of the movie, it reminds us uh, uh, back in the day, like we used to live in that that cycle, you know, and. But lately, the Christianity, when they get to the middle and 
we see like we don't have that energy on that movie, but wow, uh, uh, we didn't, uh, we saw on the movie like the basic on Christianity, but uh, we see the energy of our ancestors, you know. When you when we take to their personality, when you take when we take to our dreams, we we live on that cycle. We live on that life. We always see those things. Not only we see on the movie, but we always see on our own. Yeah, thank you. I'm thinking too about like they changed the name of this town to Nazareth. Mm -hmm. um, and it used to be called um, the Plains of Weeping mm -hmm. in a way almost that has a sense of pride or history to it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, a little um, bit of history to it. Yeah, I'm just curious about that. Like when we change the name of something, what does that mean uh, culturally, right? Mm -hmm. It's to, to, to me, the way I saw it, uh, and it, 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 it's not a real place. Uh, it's, a, it's uh, I don't know what, it's not a real place. Uh, there's no Nazareth in that area that they're mentioning. But I, I feel like it, it's, it's, it's just to point out that um, I think they say when the, 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 the missionaries and everyone came, they came and gave it a name, even though it already had a name. So it's just just giving something a new name doesn't change the reality of what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's that's how I saw it. That's how I what the message that I got from that. Yeah, I appreciate that perspective. And for folks watching, um, we do have a chat going where we um we are taking questions from viewers, um, so please feel free to use the Q&A or the chat to ask questions as well. Um, one question that I'm thinking of is this quote where um, I, I, I'm trying to remember the, the character's position, but he was the one who was negotiating with the developers, right? Maybe um, was he like the... Um, member of parliament, the guy who came with the message yes. of development. Yes. Ah, yes. okay. Yes. And I think he said, uh, "We are knocking at the doors of the modern world, and it will be worth it." Is what he mm -hmm. said. Yeah, the, he so, he was selling an idea. <laughs> yes. So I'm I'm mm -hmm. curious about that. Like, we're knocking mm -hmm. on the doors of the modern world; it will be worth it. And I'm curious about that. Is it is it worth it? You know. I think uh, it would be, for me, my, my opinion would be it's it's not really worth it. It's not really worth it. Um, uh, we have to be careful, like I said earlier, we have to be careful about development. Uh, development doesn't always mean progress. Uh, it's it, it comes with a loss to many people. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, we can't really quantify the loss that the, the lady was going through. We can't, we can't really uh, quantify the emotion that the lady was going through. Bringing a dam to her wasn't, wasn't that important, you know, because uh, all, basically all her family was in, in, in the ground. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's how I see it. Right, right. There wasn't like a a, cult, a survey that went out to folks, right? Like I think, you know, it's it's just kind of makes me, um, I guess, wonder how um, how many people in this progress have just been ignored, right? As it just continues, right? Um, yes. Both in Lesotho and everywhere, really, everywhere on the planet. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. Uh, if if you'd really if you don't really uh, have a voice, it's very easy for you to be ignored. So as as you could tell, the people uh, in the small village didn't really have 
have voice per se. So it was very easy to come and try to push them in a corner and tell them what to do and ignoring how this idea was going to affect them. Yeah. 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 yeah and, and the other thing is uh, we, we noticed that uh, uh, sometimes we, we don't have to uh, copy stuff, you know? Uh, so uh, uh, it reminds like uh, we have to listen sometime our soul what what we need because uh, she was she was trying to uh, to work in, in order that to get the succeed yeah. Yeah, she, she, it, was, it was beautiful how much life came to her in this fight, in my mind. Um, there's a good question in the chat just around, what do you both think of the music that was used in the film? Um, and some questions around the traditional instrument that was played at the beginning mm -hmm. and throughout the film. Uh, what are your uh, thoughts about the music? Yeah, that's, uh, yeah it, was, uh, it was really beautiful music. So the, the instrument that they're playing is a is a is a is a, is a, is a Basutu in, instrument. It's called lesiba. So that's oh, that's yeah that's an instrument that's played uh, mostly by uh, a, a man who are heading the cattle and just to soothe self soothing music. Uh, sometimes it, it's used to be entertained. Uh, so it's 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 a it's a very old instrument in in the in the culture, yeah. So it, it very much reminded me of home. That was that was it was awesome. It was awesome hearing that instrument. And Emma, you're a musician as well, so I'm curious what you thought about the music in the film. Yeah. The, uh, the music was industry actually it reminded me uh, my culture we used to have like uh, the the uh, the hole from the cow way back so we make a hole so sometimes when we we was take when the elders was taking care with animal you can like fluid like like that so the music was industry and yeah it, it reminded us good stuff from way back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very interesting. Yeah, and uh, what I think one day we can like share those stuff. You know, we still have it, but we don't use it. You know, we see like those are old stuff, so we don't have to use it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'm curious too. Um, so this, the, when I see Mentoa, I'm thinking of um, just how powerful it is to be inside the thinking of an elder, right? Because it's such a, an intimate connection, an intimate window that we were given to like her choices. And I saw some of her choices to go file the complaint, right? Through like the bureaucratic process and, you know, trying to follow that and being dismissed and, you know, trying all of these different ways. Um, and at the end, when she stripped down, that was so powerful to me as well. And I'm curious what you think that was representing from her you know, especially after we had this whole film to kind of be inside of her, her mind and how she's viewing this. What did you think about the, the end where she just disrobed? I think uh, she, 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 she tried all she could to combat this. And there's been like roadblocks after roadblocks. And it, I think to me, her stripping down, just walking towards them. It was just uh, maybe a, a message that, okay, you have taken everything. You have taken everything from me. So this is, you've, you literally have left me naked. Everything that uh, makes me who I am, uh, uh, that my whole existence has been taken away. So 
I think that's that was the message she was trying to portray. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I I also I almost saw just the way that she was um totally her 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 natural self without any robe without any clothing like she was part of the land and one with the land in this way you know the the like her skin like reflected the land like in this way that i felt was so beautiful um at the end and and unifying um there's some questions in the chat just around like almost like what we think happened in the film because there were there were a couple parts um one where the the young boy was shot and it wasn't very clear exactly how he was killed so i'm just curious what you all think about that it looked like the chief felt responsible but it wasn't very clear it, it, it looked like the chief was under a lot of uh, a lot of stress so um he felt responsibility. Uh, he he felt uh, maybe powerless because he the chief is the guy who's supposed to protect his, his village. So it to me it, it sounded like he it looked like he had done everything he could, and the boy being shot was just another symbol of okay that. The, the peaceful village possibly that we used to know is all gone and we have nothing else left. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and he was feeling a sense of responsibility uh, for this event, yeah, this ordeal for the village. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Emma, do you have thoughts on that as well? Yeah. Uh... I think in this film, like uh, it, it gives like a, a a work of the of the the uh, perspective, you know. Like uh, when when it come, like uh, uh, what what they was like trying to do is to to make sure that they can conquer of the of their dreams. Yeah, that, that's only what I see on that part. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious too. Um, I'm just thinking about, there was a point when Mentoa said, you know, it's not just, it's not just um, the dead that are buried here. It's also the placenta, the umbilical cords, right? Like, this, this part of birth, the afterbirth that's buried alongside uh, folks who are, who have been deceased, right? So I'm just curious yeah. about that, like tradition in your culture too, Emma, with Maasai, if that is part of the culture with burial. I don't. Uh, I think, uh, uh, what, what she was trying to emphasize how important that side was to, to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was trying to emphasize how important, uh, she was trying to just say, okay, oh, a generation uh, people has been here, is over there and uh, she, she's very much connected to that side. Mm -hmm. So um, her kids have been buried there, mother's been buried there. Uh, part of her is in that is in that ground, so mm -hmm. she was trying to emphasize how important that uh, that place is. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, and and the the soil being a gift from her mother, I think, is the other thing she says as well. Um, so just thinking of that land being passed down uh, mm -hmm. many generations. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it was one of the the the, the guy the, the village guys who was saying, okay, this is. A, he was trying to. I think they were negotiating uh, how they were going to comp be compensated uh, for for the land that he was uh, 
he, he used to grow food for his family. And he, uh, he was, uh, this land was given to him by uh, his mother and the mother by the mother. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been in the family so for so many years. Mm -hmm. So just leaving this land it wasn't just easy as up, up and go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a, it comes back to that, uh, that point that uh, uh, in my culture, people are very much attached to the land. Uh, like uh, you, you have grandma's house right down the road, you have uh, your cousins right down the road. So people are very much, uh, st very much stay in one place uh, uh, for, for generations. Mm -hmm. So coming up and uh, coming and just uprooting them from this place uh, is just cutting them off from their history, basically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and and I can add something on that. Uh, 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 the land is something like uh, given, you know? Not only you have a land, but it's something like given. So we, uh, she tried to fight, to fight uh, her own land. And actually, when you to come to our culture, uh, we hold the land, the land have everything. We get food on the land. We get our uh, our intention like image on the land. So uh, we see like uh, there was like given <laughs> try to have the land, but depend on someone else. Yeah. I, I, I think for me, like being from the United States and growing up here in um, the Midwest and then now on the West Coast, when I think of um, burial practices, it's very separate from birth, right? So we often don't see like um, death and birth like um, honored in similar ways or even like brought together in a way. So for me, when I was hearing like, this is a place where that afterbirth is buried in the ground with our ancestors, right? It, it just made me like really connect to that like full life circle um, and how connected that is back to the land, right? Um, mm -hmm instead of kind of separating death is this like taboo, like we don't talk about it, it sits over here, right? It's just a sad thing that happens. Um, I feel like it brought it together in a way that just m helps the viewer understand this full cycle. Mm, just uh, weaving it into just part of life, basically. It's a, yeah, death is part of life, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, you know, when I, when I was watching, uh, I watched it a little bit uh, uh, and, and, and seeing, uh, listening to the songs uh, of mourning uh, the, the death of uh, the, the, particularly the, the, the old lady's son. It, it reminded me of all the, you know, the death of my grandma, the, the death of people who were close to me so uh, it wasn't very easy to, it reminded me a little bit of sadness, uh, but uh, it, it had so much beauty in it that it wasn't, uh, I was gonna start weeping and crying. It was the beauty of the pictures in, the, in this film were very soothing. Yeah, so it was a mixed bag of a little bit of sadness and a little bit of reminding me of home. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very fantastic. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And and Mosa, I'm very glad that you mentioned the singing because the singing was throughout, mm. you know. And yeah, um, yeah. I I think like I'm just curious about how the, like what you were thinking. Do you recognize those songs? Were they familiar to you? Even just in a way of like. Uh, like at the beginning when, when, as you mentioned, they were singing outside of Mentoa's door, 
and she was inside and um, I think the preacher was sitting right next to her door speaking to her with the sisters singing in the background. So yeah, I'm just curious about that like feeling of song or if any of that felt familiar to you as well. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, one of uh, the songs that people sing when there's a mourning or, mm -hmm. or sadness. So it was a very familiar song. Uh, yeah, so like I said earlier, it, it's, it, it, it was a music of sorrow, but it, the, the instrument in the, in the beginning of the film is, uh, is, a, is a little piece of history that, that uh, we've had for generations. So that kind of music has a different element to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, the, the, the music is, is very common. And I just wonder from each of you, when I think about the land, I grew up on, on a farm here in, in the United States and um, I have so many memories and stories about the land or what I did when I was like a kid. So I'm just mm -hmm. curious when you think of yourself at seven or eight years old, um, going out onto the land, what were you doing? Who were you playing with and what games were mm -hmm. you doing? playing on the land. <laughs> yeah, growing up, uh, you just go out and just play with all the kids and uh, grew up in a, a, in Morija in, in a village, uh, just play with the neighborhood kids. But my family is, is uh, like I, that, which brings back to that being tied to the land, my whole family, cousins and aunts and everyone is right right in one place. So I used to, growing up, we'll play with the cousins and uh, people are very, it, it, it's family is very, very important. It's not very easy to just up and leave and disconnect from family. So uh, I, I grew up around family uh, most of my, my young age. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh... So myself, with the interesting, uh, when I grow up in the family, uh, you know, we are farming, yeah. My, my, my family, they are farming, but actually they, are, they take care with animal like cattle. So when I was the kid, uh, like from seven to 10 uh, above, because I went to school when I was 10, when I was 11, so I was, take care with animal all the time, go with my, my friends and take care of animal around the community there. Because when you are the kid, they, they, can, they can give you like a uh, small cattle so you can take care around the, around the community, the community so you don't go far. So the old boys in my community, the responsibility of the boy is to take care with animal. The responsibility of the girls, the teenagers, is to look for the small firewood for for cooking. Yeah. So that's all I can share about that part. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, in I I appreciate hearing that, and um, in so many ways, it's it's similar to my experience on the farm here with sort of just being outside all day long and running around with other children and having farm work to do, but it always felt like a game. Like we always made it fun, you know? Um, and I was just thinking in the film, like when, as the children are running around, um, there's also time for them to connect to elders, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So I know the three of us are parents and I'm just thinking yeah. about uh, just thinking yeah. about like that um, culture of, of elders around as well and the benefit of that. So thinking of um, particularly the one little boy that's that's asking about the history. Right. Mm -hmm. So most I'm curious, like, what do you t talk to your children about when it, when you talk about the land that you're from? Um, <laughs> when I talk to my kids right now, I, 
when I talk about home, because they're very still very young, um, you know, my oldest is two and a half. Uh, I, I haven't got into too much detail, but the one thing that I, uh, is very important to me is uh, teach him the language. Uh, so I'm teaching him the language. He has to speak the language. So language is going to be very important to him to be able to connect to the culture back home. Um, you know, you, you can connect very easily if you can communicate. Uh, so so it, 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 I don't want him to feel out of place when he goes home because I, 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 I want him to enjoy the, the, the culture. Uh, and be part of the culture when he goes to visit. So yeah, so family is very important to me. So I, I, I try to keep in touch with back home, uh, video call with the boy and uh, yeah, uh, I tell him stories about home all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, on my, yeah, so on my side, I can like, uh, I can teach the, the children a bit because actually uh, before my dad passed away, he gave me some tips of the culture and, and I used to stay with him very close. Uh, so uh, it is good like to update our, our children to the culture. Uh, not only we moving from the village to the city, but uh, most of time it is good like to take our children to the, to the same land where we grow up and to, to see and to understand how the lifestyle of there, because most of the children now from the city, when you take them to the, to the bush, to the, to, the, to the land where we grow up, they see like, hey, what's going on here? So it is, it is better than to take our children when they are very little to update them from that, that, that place. Yeah, so, and actually it's good to teaching them about the community. Yeah, thank you, Emma. Um, I'm just wondering with just kind of like to, we have about 10 minutes left and thinking of um, wrapping up the conversation. Um, I'm thinking of the, uh, the intention of the film right, and, and seeing the film, um, knowing that it's in an international uh, lens, um, what do you think was the director's hope for this film? Um, and does it make you feel compelled in any way like to continue to share this story outside of this space? Yeah, it is very, it is very in touch on the, on the land. I, I, I'm very interested of the film, the filmmaker who did the film, they are very in touch of, of the land and everything on the movie is moving from the land. So they taking they taking up to the way back. So they are very in touch on the on that land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so to me, I think uh, the, 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 the story that he, that they were trying to portray here was uh, uh, the displacement that comes with uh, external forces. Uh, people who come, who know without asking what the people of the land need, but coming with an idea that they think the people need. Uh, it's 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 just all the negatives that came with uh, uh, engineers of change, if you will, that uh, came to places without with an idea of helping or developing or uh, progress, or, or if you will. So uh, it, it's 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 basically a story of uh, you know development is good. Um, but development should be with the people you're trying to develop. You should ask them what they need, not tell them what they need. Um, it, it's, it's a multi-layered story. It, it's, it's a story of sadness and, and uh, it's, it's, 
in a way, it's a, it's a, it, the pictures show the beauty of, of, of the country. Uh, and I, I'm hope, I, I feel like it's, it's the story advertised the country very well because it's a very beautiful country. Uh, so maybe it'll serve as a little bit of tourism marketing for, for the country. So it's it's not very, it's not only a story of sadness. It's a it's a, it's a multi layered story. Yeah, and being in an international platform will hopefully bring some awareness to the country. Uh, some people can marvel at we marvel at growing up. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a beautiful film. Yes, I agree. And I, I think for me, it, it did make me reflect on land justice movements here in the United States. Um, I'm thinking most recently about the Jordan Cove pipeline fight that has been uh, in our region on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And indigenous people have been fighting that uh, for, mm -hmm. for months and months and months. And finally, there was a judgment actually in favor of the, the folks who were fighting for their land. Um, of course that, you know, in the US court system, it, it's never over. It's going mm -hmm. to continue to go, but, um, you know, through the court system. But I think what, what brings me like, sort of like um, to action is wanting to know about those issues that are happening here where I live um, and mm -hmm. wanting to somehow be involved either, either, you know, with, with children or in the work that I do, trying to find a way to be involved and mm -hmm. protect these lands, right? Um, because we yeah. really, we, we have such a beautiful planet that we live on. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a, it's, it's, it's a story of, uh, like I said earlier, it's a story of uh, just uh, how the voiceless something can be uh, can be treated. Uh, it's 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 not only a story of uh, Lesotho per se. It's 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 happening everywhere. It's it's yeah. connected everywhere. Like everywhere you see, everywhere you there's always uh, somebody with the voice, uh, somebody with the authority to do something, trying to. Uh, Mis displace either displace somebody or just uh, 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 subvert uh, 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 certain people without a voice. Yeah, so it's a story of the voiceless. Yes, yes. Well, thank you both so much. I'm curious if you have any last thoughts. Uh, maybe uh, <laughs> my last thoughts would be uh i'm i'm not a filmmaker i'm not a, a by any means professional critique for film or anything the the only reason that i i'm part of this panel is because uh like i said my, earlier my, the, the country is very small and people are very attached to the land and there's about a handful of us who move, who moved to the us so i was just one of the people who could uh, be available to 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 answer some questions. So uh, uh, you, you'll forgive me because it's if the responses that I gave were not really professional as far as film goes. But I was it's a it's 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 an opinion. Yeah, it's an opinion of a film. Most like you're you're getting so much love in the chat right now. I just want you to know. I think folks really enjoyed um, hearing from both of you. So and and for myself too. I, I'm this is not my profession, um, but mm -hmm. we learned that we're neighbors here in Seattle, yeah. and so that's already cool. yeah, that's I have a positive from Lesotho. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and Emma, yeah. Emma, this is the work that you do. So from your perspective as a filmmaker, yeah. um, does it make you feel like yeah. you want to be involved somehow with this story? Yeah. Yeah, the filmmaker, this is my work. Uh, so uh, I feel like it is a uh, 
work and I appreciate stuff together. So working going on around there. So uh, I appreciate and uh, and then I see the energy of the film. Yeah. And the all scene is very cutting and sound is really good. I love it. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's so well done. So well done. Excellent. Well, thank you both so, so much for taking time to talk with us about this film. Um, and I hope everyone watching continues to check out all of the films through March 10th um, on uh, online. And thanks to you all for, for joining us. This has been really cool to make these connections uh, all over the world with friends <laughs> and new friends. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Bye.